What's poppin' with y'all YouTube world, my fellow subscribers? My name is Jemai McKinney, or you can just call me Juice because that is my nickname. I appreciate you guys for watching today. Be sure to smash this like button right now as it does help these videos get to the public and the channel overall to grow. Subscribe to my channel if you're new as well. I do post a ton of great sports videos on here weekly, almost every single day if I can, and turn on post notifications too so you don't miss a single one of those videos that I post. It's only right to you guys. I've kind of not been talking about college football enough on this channel, so I figured today, guys, I'm going to kind of recap about what happened last week sort of for college football and just overall talk about the whole college football landscape. This whole video is dedicated to what has happened in 2019 in the college football world. So we'll get into so many things today. We'll talk about the SEC, the ACC, the contenders, you know, some playoff races. We'll just get into a whole bunch of college football related stuff today. I'll cover the top 25, all that good stuff. But before I do that, I want to give a shout out to my college. Shout out to the University of Toledo, the college that I go to. I attend the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. The football team absolutely destroyed Murray State last week. I'm so proud of my uh, college that I go to. I do think that Toledo's probably going to win the MAC this year, so just shout out to my college. They're doing great things. But to get right to things, guys, we're going to discuss this top 25 that just came out this week. So in the top 25, in the top 10, we got Clemson at number one, Alabama number two, Georgia number three. LSU number four, Oklahoma number five, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Auburn, Florida, and Utah round out the top 10. Then up next, we have the Michigan Wolverines at number 11. We have Texas at number 12. We have Wisconsin at number 13. Penn State at number 14. UCF at number 15, coming in strong. Oregon Pac-12 school at number 16. Uh, Texas A&M at SEC school at number 17. Iowa at number 18. Washington State at 19. Boise State, Virginia, Washington, Cal, Arizona State, and TCU round out the whole top 25. So not too many issues with this top 25 overall for me in my eyes personally. I have too many issues with it, okay? For me, Ohio State's a little bit too low. I would personally put Ohio State at number four and put LSU at number five and Oklahoma at number six. But again, not too much trouble there. Guys, this whole top 25 is pretty much pointless. We all know, well, it's not pointless because that's where the teams are ranked, obviously. But again, Obviously, these teams, there's a lot more football to be played. These teams are going to beat each other up. There's going to be a lot more changes. I guarantee you, in about four, five, six weeks, when we come back and revisit, revisit these topics, this will not be the same top 25, okay? It's just the, re the nature of the situation, okay? But to me, Florida's a little bit too high. Now, again, Florida, I was not very high on them, you know, coming into this year. I didn't think they were very good. I thought they would go 8-4. and four. There was a lot of turnover in the offseason about Florida losing a ton of recruits this year. I just didn't. I just wasn't feeling Florida this year. I really wasn't. They're at number um, nine. I do think that they are a little bit too high. Now they will be out without Felipe Franks for pretty much the whole year. So if you're a Florida fan, pretty disappointing news. I don't think Florida was competing for the SEC title this year at all. They're gonna probably lose to Georgia. They're probably gonna lose a couple more games down the road. I just, I just wasn't a believer in Florida. They were not very impressive versus Miami to me, who's not a very good team as it turns out. So unfortunate, unfortunate news for Gators fans. Um. For me, Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin is the most underrated team in all of college football right now. They are way too low to me, okay? I get it. They've not played some a lot of great competition the first two weeks of the season, but you got to look at you got to look how they're playing, guys. They're they're at number 13. To me, Wisconsin's a top 10 team based on the eye test and the way they're playing. They have averaged 55 points per game this year on offense, okay? In two games played, okay? Wisconsin also has the number one defense in all college football. They have not allowed a single point in eight quarters played, okay? The Wisconsin's a legitimate sleeper team this year, especially in the Big Ten. And I think they I think they need to be a little bit higher. But that's the only problems I really have. Um, Notre Dame, to me, also is a little bit too high. They struggled to beat Louisville. Louisville had more first downs in that game. They had more rushing yards. They had better time of possession in that game. And Louisville, honestly, at times, outplayed Notre Dame. Notre Dame looked outmanned at times versus a Louisville team that had a two-win season last year in the ACC. Okay, the ACC is terrible. Okay, if you can only win two games in the ACC, you're bad. You're just bad if you can only do that in the ACC because the ACC is terrible. Outside of Clemson, there's no elite teams, okay? And I'm going to transition to Georgia versus Notre Dame. I think that Georgia's obviously, honestly going to win this game. They will dominate um, Notre Dame. Georgia's averaging over 286 yards per game running the ball this year. Notre Dame's run defense is not very good. It's, it's not very good. It's just ranked near the bottom tier of all college football. They were absolutely dominated by a Louisville team that's not very good. Running the football, Louisville pretty much ran the ball down their throat. Georgia, with the best offensive line in college football, with that defense, with those, with those athletes, they're going to absolutely dominate and annihilate Notre Dame to me. I expect Georgia to cover the spread. Do not take Notre Dame in this game. They will lose, in my opinion. That's, that's why I think 
Now, as far as teams I think will make the college football playoffs, I said in the offseason, Clemson, Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio State. Those are my four teams I think will make the playoffs. I'm still going to stick with those things. Nothing has changed my opinion in this entire college football season to say otherwise and to move off those picks. If you want to know more about why I think these teams will make the playoffs, be sure to check out my college football playoff video. Okay, but let's transition to the SEC because the SEC, man, is it a loaded conference once again. Now, guys, I said LSU was a, was one of the top five teams coming into this year, but I never was this, would be this shocked about how good this LSU offense has looked. LSU looks like they can score with an Alabama. They look like they can score with a Georgia, with an Oklahoma. Okay, Joe Brady coming in to you know run this entire offense from the New Orleans Saints has made a world difference for this entire LSU football team and their offense as a whole. And Joe Burrow as a quarterback overall, LSU is a real contender. Now again, LSU they do have to travel to Mississippi State, they do have to travel to Alabama, they play Texas A&M, they play Auburn, so not an easy schedule. But again, if they can get that game versus Alabama, they will be definitely considered. They will definitely be a contender in my eyes, okay? But I just don't think they're going to beat Alabama. To me, Alabama, they're still a very good team, okay? Now, they do have to play Auburn. They have to play at Mississippi State. They have to play at Texas A&M. They have to play LSU. Well, Alabama, to me, is going to go undefeated. I know Texas A&M is a very good team. But I just think Alabama is just slightly better. Well, not slightly better. They're a better team overall, definitely. But it's in Texas A&M. So, I do think Texas A&M has a chance to upset Alabama, potentially, but I just don't see it. Tua Tagovailoa is playing out of his mind, guys. 77% completion percentage, 11 yards per attempt, 12 touchdowns, no interceptions, and 213 pass rating. She looks like he's even better than he was last year. Last year, he was second to Kyler Murray in the Heisman voting. Okay, Jerry Judy's an absolute stud. This Alabama defense has not missed a beat. I still think Alabama's going to win their side of the conference, not win the conference overall. I think Georgia win the conference, but again, Alabama, they look pretty good. Texas A&M. Texas A&M could be Alabama, but I do worry about their offense a little bit. I do think they will beat a very good Auburn team this week. Okay, Auburn's, look, they did beat Oregon, but to me, Oregon's just, they're overrated. They're not a very good team to me. They show that they cannot be the fifth or sixth best SEC team in Auburn. To me, Auburn is not the best team in the SEC right now. Okay, they're number eight. That's a little bit too high for me. I think Texas A&M will take care of business. But again, when I look at Texas A&M's schedule, they got to play Alabama, UGA, LSU. I mean, it's just too tough of a schedule. And Tennessee, well, man, they, yeah, I don't know what to say about Tennessee. Tennessee is just a terrible program right now. They lost to BYU. They lost to Georgia State. They did beat Chattanooga 45 to nothing, but honestly, who cares? All right, let's transition to the Big Ten because the Big Ten is, to me, the deepest conference top to bottom this year in college football. Now, again, Ohio State, to me, is still the class of the entire Big Ten. They are the class of the Big Ten, okay? They have five teams ranked, but I think that there honestly are more teams that could be ranked. I look at Nebraska, Michigan State, Northwestern. Those are teams that potentially could be ranked this year. Ohio State looks like one of the four best teams in all college football, guys. Justin Fields, J.K. Dobbins, that elite offense. Ryan Day is filling with Urban Meyer's shoes, no doubt about it. That defense is looking nasty. I told you guys it would be a top 10 defense led by Chase Young. Ohio State, to me, looks like a legitimate playoff team. Now, again, Michigan, I thought they'd be right behind Ohio State, but again, Michigan hasn't shown me anything. They really haven't. Um, Again, they just haven't. Uh, versus Army, they were struggling. This offense still looks inept. They don't look like they can move the ball versus elite teams. That's the key. I will be very interested to see how Wisconsin and Michigan match up this week because Michigan, they're going into uncharted territory, man. They, they have to win this game in order to compete. Okay, they have to win this game. They can't lose to Wisconsin just for their psyche overall and just because their schedule's pretty hard, okay? They got to still play Notre Dame. They still got to play at Ohio State. They still got to play at Penn State. If they drop this game to Wisconsin, it could be a long season for the Wolverines. So, again, we'll see how Michigan uh, we'll see how Michigan looks. Michigan State obviously disappointed this past, this past week, losing to Arizona State. Man, oh, man, I kept telling you Michigan State fans, they have no offense. They're no offense. You, it's whatever, though. Um... Nebraska is an underrated team. Northwestern's an underrated team. I've already talked about Wisconsin. The Big Ten is pretty deep. And Michigan, Wisconsin, that's a game to look out for. You know, the Wolverines have pretty much have yet to find their identity in offense. Okay, they have to find their identity. We'll see how legitimate Wisconsin is and can be when they play them. It's a must win for Michigan. But again, Ohio State to me looks like the best team in the Big Ten. Let's move to the Big 12. I think the Big 12 is kind of the opposite of the Big Ten. Um, there's two teams. There's two legitimate teams. Oklahoma and Texas. It's no one else. Who can be that third team that, you know, matches up with an Oklahoma or a Texas? 
To me, it is Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is a legitimate sleeper team in the Big 12, okay? They have the number one wide receiver in Taylor Wallace, okay? They have the number one running back right now as far as the production standpoint goes in, Ch in Chuba Hubbard, okay? So Oklahoma State is going to be able to score some points. If I'm Texas, I'm very worried about Oklahoma State coming into my house to play this week. This could potentially be the upset of the week of Texas playing Oklahoma State. Look out for that game. That might be the upset of the week. But again, I think Oklahoma is going to still roll through this whole conference. They're the best team in the conference. Their schedule is a joke. Oklahoma gets Iowa State at home. They get TCU at home. Now, they do have to travel on the road to Oklahoma State. I just stated that Oklahoma State is one of the most underrated teams in all of college football. No doubt. But all in doubt, Lincoln Riley, this offense with Jalen Hurts, who's playing out of his mind. If I had to vote for who's who's winning the Heisman right now, if I had to cast in a vote today, it's Jalen Hurts. This Oklahoma team is legitimate, okay? And this defense, wow, it's still pretty bad. It's not as bad as it was last year. You couldn't be as bad as you were last year, okay? That's just the reality. I don't think Oklahoma's one of the four best teams this year, but I think just, that just based off their schedule, they will get into the college football playoffs. Texas looks pretty good, but again, they did lose to LSU. I just think Texas is about a year away. That's how I feel about Texas, okay? Moving on to, I believe, the Pac-12. Uh, the Pac-12. Disappointment. That's what I think about the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is disappointing. Uh, the bit, the best, arguably the most talented team in the Pac-12 could not be the fifth best SEC team. Because to me, the four best teams in the SEC right now are Georgia, Alabama, you know, Texas A&M, and LSU. In no particular order. Those are the four best teams. Auburn, to me, is at number five. I like Auburn. They're a decent team. But they're not being those teams I mentioned above. Okay? They're not being those teams. And Oregon, arguably the most talented team in the Pac-12, could not beat Auburn. I mean, I'm sorry, the Pac-12 is not getting into the playoffs. They have no respect for me overall. They're a good conference, but when it comes to playing the big dogs, I don't want to hear about the Pac-12 competing with the SEC, the Big Ten, you know, the Big 12 potentially. I don't even know. The Pac-12 to me is just not very good. Now, again, the Pac-12 has a couple of very nice teams, decent teams. You know, Utah is a top 10 team. They're very good. Oregon obviously potentially could be a top 10 team at the end of the year. Washington State's a solid team. They're at number 19 in the country. Washington, who I picked to win this conference, has majorly disappointed. How does how does Washington lose to Cal two years in a row? It's no excuse. I don't understand it. Washington, I get it. Their offense is not very good. They lost a lot of parts on defense. I get it. But you can't lose to Cal two years in a row. You can't lose to Cal at home this year. I was very high on Washington. I thought Jacob Eason was going to be a very good quarterback. And I, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily think that Washington was a, a great team. But I just looked at their schedule, and their schedule is very soft. And Washington still, to me, can potentially win this Pac-12 conference. Because when I look at Washington, they control their own destiny. They play Washington State. They play Oregon. They play Utah. Okay? All those games will be played at home. So I think that Washington can potentially win this conference. We'll have to see. I, I, but again, I just don't have faith. I think their offense is inept. I think that it comes down to Utah and Oregon. Utah looks like a pretty good team. Their defense is legit. Oregon, we all know they have the talent. They have the quarterback. They have the running backs. They have the wide receivers. They have the offensive line. They have everything you want in a great team. So we'll see between Utah and Oregon. But as far as that goes, I mean, Chip Kelly and UCLA, they're terrible. They're, they're not very good. They're 0-3. They're just not very good, and I don't see the progression. I don't see the progression between Chip Kelly and, and UCLA this year. Um, they lost to San Diego State at home. They're 0-3 once again. They're not. It's one thing to lose, but I don't get the sense that UCLA is competing. That worries me. Okay, they still have to travel to Washington State. They still have to travel to Arizona. At UC, They have to travel to USC. They have to travel to Stanford. They have to travel to Utah. UCLA is in for a rough, rough year, guys. It just is a rough year. And honestly, guys, if Chip Kelly doesn't get this together after next year, he might be out the door. As far as the ACC goes, it's Clemson and everyone else. Clemson, to me, they were my pick to win the national championship. I said they would go undefeated this year, and that, to me, has not changed one bit in my right mind. Okay, Clemson, they've gotten through the tougher part of their schedule. They beat Texas A&M. They beat Syracuse. They beat both those teams convincingly. The only tough game left on their schedule is at South Carolina. South Carolina is not a good team to me. Clemson's going to roll. They're going to annihilate the whole ACC. They're going to win their conference. They are going back to the college football playoffs as the number one seed. Clemson's not getting knocked off. And again, 
I do worry about them a little bit when they have to face a Georgia potentially or potentially an Ohio State, Alabama, because Trevor Lawrence has regressed a little bit. Trevor Lawrence is only co is only completing 60% of his passes this year. Okay, he has five touchdowns and five interceptions. But again, I trust that Trevor Lawrence is good enough of, of a player to figure it out. He's he's arguably the best quarterback as far as a talent perspective goes. In all college football, guys, he's still young. He's still a sophomore. He still hasn't played a full season yet. Dabble Sweeney and that staff is going to figure it out. They have an elite running game with Travis Etienne. They have an elite wide receiver core. They have elite right. They have elite wide receivers. The defensive line has not missed a beat. Clemson's loaded. They're going to win this conference again. Ugh. Syracuse and Florida State, they disappointed me. I thought Syracuse would be a decent team. I thought the Florida State would make a bowl game this year. To me. I don't, I don't even know if both teams will make a blow, bowl game this year. I just don't see it. I thought Miami would be a pretty good team. They've disappointed me. Virginia's a solid team, but again, they are not beating Clemson. Don't even think about picking them to beat Clemson. They probably win. They probably will go to the ACC title game, but again, that's their Super Bowl. They're not beating Clemson. It's Clemson and pretty much everyone else in the ACC this year. Um, I want to shift to the AAC, not the ACC, but the AAC, the conference that has UCF in, in there, okay, UCF in that conference, okay, UCF is the number 15 overall team in the country, okay, they look like they're probably going to potentially go undefeated once again, they had a big win over Stanford, 45-27, to now again, Stanford is in a retooling year, I said Stanford was not going to be very good in the offseason. I said I was down on Stanford. But again, UC, UCF absolutely dominated them. It's a big win for them. Um, Dylan Gabriel had, had four touchdowns. They're, they're the number 15 team in the country. I don't think UCF goes undefeated. I said in the offseason they would not go undefeated because I do think that Cincinnati or Pittsburgh is going to beat them. Those are two road games that they will have to play in, okay? So again... I think that Cincinnati probably beats them. I know Cincinnati just lost by a lot to Ohio State a couple weeks ago. But again, Cincinnati is a good team. They're well coached. They're a good, solid team. I think that they probably are the team that will knock off UCF this year, just at least in the regular season. But UCF is going to probably win this conference once again. They get Houston at home. Memphis might challenge them. But again, I still think that UCF is going to roll this year. So, you know. That's pretty much my recap of week number four. That's pretty much my recap of college football overall for how the season has gone. Comment your favorite college football team. Let me know about the biggest storylines that you've been following this whole college football season. Tell me where I'm right. Tell me where I'm wrong in the comment section. Do you disagree with all the things I said? Do you agree with all the things I said? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. I love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video today. Be sure to smash this like button right now if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're new as well. I do post a ton of great sports videos weekly and almost every single day if I can. A fun fact about me is I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world. I want to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. Kind of like Colin Cowherd, Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp. You get the point. Okay, I want to do sports, television, and radio for a full living once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. So the best thing you guys can do to just help me continue to grow as a young broadcaster is to just share this channel with all your friends because potentially if this channel really, really gets somewhere, I want to start my own network, okay? You know, or potentially if it doesn't, you know, or if I fall a little bit short, I want to go into a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. So the best thing you guys can do to just Flat out, just help me grow as a broadcaster. Help me learn. You know, get other people hit to this channel. You know, just share this channel with all your friends. Share this channel on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. All that good stuff. Also, be sure to follow me on all my social media platforms. And once again, guys, just share this channel with everyone you know. Get everyone hip and watching these videos. Get my voice out there and heard. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Instagram. All that good stuff. It's been your boy, Jemiah McKinney, or you can just call me Juice. I appreciate all you guys for tuning in today. I really do. Have a God-blessed day. Stay motivated, you guys. And I'm out.